flipping work now. I don't know what's going on. Flipping things absolutely nuts. <clears throat> I was still live for like an hour with my phone, and for some reason, it isn't working whatsoever. Um, come on the laptop, and instantly it flipping works straight away. So, <sighs> what a flipping palaver. Right. Well, it's a bit awkward to show you in here because I'm in the office and I wanted to be in the workshop to show you all this. But I'm going to do a little test. I'm going to do a little test and I need your input. So, um, I can't even show you now. Wait, I'll tell you what, wait there. I'll fetch the stuff in and I'll show you what the test is. Give me one second, let me just grab it down here. Right, I've got us some. You know, I like using SBR. I've got us some PVA. Sorry about the uh, the crap camera as well, by the way. It's my laptop one. And I've got us some blue grit. And I've also got us some SBR. And what I want to do is, I want to do a test. <clears throat> I want to do a little test. Yeah, wait there a second. Let me just turn this on. I wasn't going to be doing this. There we go. Now you can see me. I wasn't going to be doing this on this camera. But anyway, I just couldn't get live on my phone for some reason. So, what the what the score is, I'm going to test and find out once and for all which is the best primer, be it PVA, um, Blue Grit, or SBR. And what I'm going to do is, I've got a cement board, which I can't bring in here because it's massive, it's out there, and that's why I was trying to do the stream out there in the workshop. I've got a cement board, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it into decent sized squares as little test pieces, and I'm gonna prime it with all the different primers, and then we're gonna test. Now, the reason I've used cement board is because I want to do a, a pull test. I want to test how strong the um, adhesion is, and if I use plasterboard, it'll just rip the paper. Straight off the front of the board. So plasterboard's no good. And I thought we could do it on a wall. But ultimately, if if the adhesion is that strong, it could pull off the plaster behind it. So then it's not a fair test. So I thought to make it uh, a nice solid standard test, we'll just use cement board. And we'll use the smooth side as well. We're going to use the smooth side of the board. So we can, we can literally, you know, it's, what's the word for it? Have a controlled situation. We're going to do them all at the same time with the same uh, mix of plaster. And what I want to do is we're going to have PVA that has just gone tacky and PVA that has been primed ready. You know, it's been it's been follow the directions on the back of the tub. You know what I mean? So there's going to be two tests for the PVA and the same with the SBR. I'm going to do a one over SBR that's been left to go off. So it's completely sealed. And, and another little test panel over SBR that's just sort of started going tacky, you know, so it's it's still quite um, quite fresh. And then we're also going to do the blue grit. Now, this is why I'm telling you guys, and this is why we're doing the live right before I make the video, because I want your input. Up to now, I'm going to test, because I want this to just be done once, settled, finished, never have to come back to the subject ever again. It's like, you know, just put it to bed. So I'm going to test PVA. SBR and Blue Grit. I want to know if you'd like me to include in the test any other primer or any crazy concoction. Because I know some fellas like to mix the Blue Grit with SBR and all different stuff. So, so tell me in the comments if you want a different mixture of something. <sighs> the PVA, I usually mix it 50-50 of water. But I know some fellas like to have it like... Um, 70% water, 30% PVA. So, you know, let me know if, if the ratio is okay or if you want any, you know, if you use a different ratio and you want me to test that as well, include that in the test, then let me know. So, if there's any other products, let me know. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut. I've been trying to think how can we pull this the best way. Now, there's one way I thought of we could glue something to the surface of the plaster and pull it off. Now, I'm gonna, this it gets a little bit more technical because we can't just pull it 
I've got to attach scales because we need to know how much pressure it takes to pull it off. Okay, so I've, I've ordered some scales to do a pull test. Scales that are going to go up to um, 50 kilograms. You know, we can apply 50 kilograms of force. I think that's going to be enough. If it isn't, then the video will get paused and I'll, I'll get some better scales because what you find is scales that go up to 300 kilograms don't test the lower end. So I'm thinking, you know, we should only take 50 key to, to pull it off most. <clears throat> I was thinking we're going to glue something to the surface, but I thought, you know what? I don't know. I don't want the glue to interfere with the plaster. So I'm going to cut pieces of scrim exactly the same length. And I'm going to create a little loop in the skin that's going to stay stuck out of the plaster. And the loops are going to be exactly the same size so that the bits that are embedded in the plaster are exactly the same size. It's got to, you know, it's got to be a fair test. So we're going to get them set up so that I can get all the scrims in place. And then I want to just plaster it across all of them in one swoop. So it's, you know, it, they've all had exactly the same time. And then once they've set and gone off, maybe even dried out. Then I'll do the pull test on them. Now, another thing I want to do is whilst it's setting, whilst it's starting to go off, I'm also going to test suction control. Now, I'm thinking of literally just touch testing it, you know, because every every half an hour or so, just, just seeing, you know, which one's pulling in faster, um, which one's controlling the suction best. And that's another reason I use some I wanted to use cement board because it's a high suction background. If you've ever gone onto cement boards, you know it, it it sucks like so. It's 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 gonna be a good um it's gonna be a counter test on. Um now is there any other tests that you'd like me to do whilst I'm doing this? And can you think of a better way of testing uh, the suction control rather than just a touch test? Um is there any other way of testing that that, that springs to mind for you? So the thing is, it's only me thinking of these way, things to do. So I'm just putting it out there to you guys so we can just do it once. I don't have to go through this again. Six months down the line, people go, oh, well, you never did this or you never tried it like that, you know. So so give me your opinion anyway. Let me know what you think, uh, if there's any any other things that we should try. Now, I'm just going to um, I'm just gonna have a little look through the comments and see if anything stands out as well. Um, I'm going to start this tomorrow. So if you're watching this on the replay, still comment because we can still potentially um, add your test in. I'm going to start priming. I've got to cut the cement board up and I can't do it now because I've got to get the angle grinder out. And it's, you know, it's it's getting on, isn't it? So last thing I want to do is start like cutting boards up now whilst we, my neighbours are trying to get the, that old, aren't they? So... <sighs> Right, let's see what we got. Uh, Magnes, I have some prefab concrete and the uh, unions have white plaster. How to prime them? One type of the prefab absorbs well, the other not so much, but still absorb. Okay. Um, uh, Animone, PVA and sand I used to use well before blue grit. I could be rich now. <laughs> Okay, well, I've actually got I've got sand in the workshop, so we can do another little one with um, gritted PVA. We can put some red sand in the PVA as well. Uh, do it because I've got a massive sheet of board, so we can make loads of little test samples and do loads of different ones, you know. And I'll just label them all, and we'll just see. Um, so we can do that. Yeah, we'll put some sand in the PVA. Um, Okay, um, Neil, uh, the Feb grit is always really patchy, even after good stir. Uh, Bostic is a nicer colour too. <laughs> okay, so we've got to get some Bostic, have we? Um, two to one water and PVA ratio, Matthew Meller. Okay. Um, Jordan Elmhurst, you need a, a Newton. I'll tell you what, we're there. Let me write some of this stuff down because... Um, I'm going to struggle to remember all this. Let's just get this. Um, let's get this. This is this is why I wanted you guys in on this as well, so we could collectively think. Um, so we're going to do some. Get me pen working. Come on. There we go. Uh, 
Sandman PDA. And PDA. Um, two to one water PVA ratio. I'm gonna, like I say, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do a test. We'll do a two to one test, but I'm also gonna do a test if you follow the exact instruction. Well, the exact instructions on the back. So let's just see. What does it even say? Give us a second. Now, don't laugh. Right, <laughs> don't be taking the mic. Get me, uh, get me binoculars on. Um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, right, okay. Uh, one part PVA to three to six parts water. Allow this to dry. Step two, once the primer is dry, apply bonding coat, one part PVA, two parts water. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a proper there, uh, a fiver. Okay, I don't really wear glasses, but I'm struggling to see, so I bought them from Mazda. Um, we'll, we'll do it the proper way as well. So we'll, we'll do it what it says on the tub, and then we'll do your two-to-one mix as well. Uh Right, Newton meter, Newton meter, um, measure how many pounds needed, like a set of scales, really. But I think they're finer tuned. Yeah, okay. So I've actually just ordered some scales. I've ordered um, some scales, and what my plan is to do is to hook them onto the screen and and have the camera set up, uh, filming, and then right. So I, I have thought about this. I have thought about this. I'll tell you exactly how I'm planning on doing it. Imagine that is my piece of cement board. It's going to be about, you know, so big, each one. I'm going to set it like that, yeah? And then I'm going to put an act. Once it's plastered in the middle here, there'll be a blob of plaster in the middle. It'll all be similar thickness, you know, applied with my trowel as best as I possibly can to get it the same thickness on all the test pieces. And there'll be a loop of scrim sticking out of it. I'm going to hook on the scale to the bottom of the scrim so it's attached and we have an axle stand here on top of the cement board keep it pinned down an axle stand and then a bar going across right unless you can think of a better way to a car jack and i'm going to just slowly jack it up and watch the pressure watch the you know the poundage increasing on the scale with the camera set on it and just slowly jack it until we can see at what you know, poundage it, it is before it rips the screen out, you know, before it rips the plaster off. So that's how I'm planning on doing it. Unless somebody can take the time and write out a better way that you think would be a better way. Because, so, you know, it's got to be quite precise, hasn't it? So, um, Josh plays poor. I can see why your wife managed you now with those glasses on. Uh, um, yeah, please do PVA and sand. I I will be doing it. Um, Dad and Andrews, two parts PVA to one part sparks from the grinder. <laughs> I, I usually catch those sparks with my eyes. Um, Jordan Elmhurst, perhaps to help measure the rate of suction control, have a timer going from the moment you lay it on. And then you can check each sample colour, at least at certain stages, maybe. That's it, Jordan. Yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing. I am going to have a little timer set up. And I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, we can check the colour. But I'm going to keep touch testing it, you know, seeing if it's sticking to my fingers when you put, you know, stick your finger in it a little bit and just see if it's still stuck to it. And then when it's firm and then at the point where it's like, you know, not, you can't mark it anymore. Um, I would like to think of a way maybe we could apply a measure the amount of pressure you know, when we can still leave an indentation in it, but I haven't really, I haven't planned that as such. Um, uh, Omar, and just for fun, the Mega Mix, <laughs> one part PVA, one part SBR, and one part Blue Grit. Yeah, do you know, I was, I didn't know if anyone wanted um, maybe a stabilising solution um mixed in because that was another thing as well i'm, I'm i want to do more tests in the future what i want i want to find um when we go over lime wash 
I always stabilize it first and then SBR it. Now, someone, I don't think this is right, but someone said in the comments, you don't need stabilizing solution. The SBR will stabilize the um, lime wash. I don't think it will. doesn't make any sense to me. But I'm going to test that. that future videos, not, not now. We're just going to do this for now. Uh, but also what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the stabilizing solution with the SBR and see if that works um, because that will potentially speed everyone up if we can knock a whole um, process out the application of it. <sighs> uh, Jordan Almhurst, that's basically the car jack. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to pull it with my hand with the the um, scales because I think that'd be too too fast, you know. Whereas at least with the car jack, I can slowly, slowly do it, you know, so we can literally read, you know, and, and see what it actually rips out. Um, so we'll just see. We'll see how that goes. Unless, like I say, unless someone comes up with a better idea. Uh, Brian Hatley, can you measure it with a moisture meter? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the readings would just be off the flipping chart. Like, I don't know. Um, so now, now, as well, we're not just going to do... I'm not just... Once I've done the, the pull test and ripped it out, I'm also going to then... Um, we'll have a little play around scraping it, see how easy it scrapes off, um, and maybe maybe hit it with a hammer as well. <coughs> I was originally going to do it all on one big sheet and just with a with a, a Sharpie, just mark off the squares, you know, so I could literally plaster over the whole thing, uh, and then it's it's all done very fast. But then the thing is, if I'm doing the pull test, and I've done the pull test on maybe five different pieces, by the time I get to the six piece, that board's been flexed around quite a lot, so I didn't. I wanted it to be fair, you know, because um, I know some fellas will not budge on their PVA. They're like, no PVA, that's that SBRs. And I always get people saying to me, once SBRs completely dried and set and sealed, you know, gone off, and you skim on it, how can the finish possibly stick to it? Because it's it's completely sealed. It's like glass. So, so I've tested this myself in the past. And it was well adhered. But, I mean, I haven't tested it like how we're going to do in a really controlled sort of environment where, you know, we'll see for definite and put it to bed. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Be interesting to see, won't it? <laughs> see what happens. Um, where are we up to here? Uh, cornflower. Okay. <laughs> um... Uh, Zinza Guards is a great product. Can go over this temper with it. Always two coats. Yes. Yeah. I, oh, I took it out now. I usually just use um, the cheaper stuff, um, stabilizer solution. But if you get it from Screw Fix, ends up costing about 40 with a tub because it's Santex, but it does do the trick. Um, uh, good luck, Kirk. I'll be watching the vid when it's up for sure. Much love, mate. Much love. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get working on this video tomorrow as well, by the way. Um, as I said, I'd, I'd start now, but I've got to cut the cement board up. That's the first thing to do, and it's um, it's a bit noisy to be cutting with the grinder um, this sort of time of the evening, isn't it? I know. Do you know? Really, I go for that much cement board. I've never even tried one of those Hardy Backer scorer things. I should probably just buy the right tool for it, shouldn't I? Ultimately, um, I do like buying tools, so I don't know why I haven't got one yet. But it always seems to be just a good excuse to get me big grinder out instead. Um, Howard Morris, on really high suction backgrounds, I tend to do really watered down SBR, like four to one, um, followed by a stronger coat. Neat. Okay. Okay. Um, I never really watered SBR down, but might be a good shout to give that a whirl. I mean, whilst we're doing it, Howard, we may as well do it, mightn't we? Whilst we're, whilst we're having a go. Um, let me write that down as well. Um, <sighs> watered. Down SBR primer, then neat pen. I can just burn through pens, mate. Then neat coat. 
Okay. Um, right, we'll try that then. Uh, I've seen on the back of your PVA tub that you can use a PVA mixture as the liquid to mix your skim as an adhesive. Have you seen this and thoughts on how it would benefit the plaster? Um, I'll tell you what I have done. Uh, I've mixed bonding with PVA for filling chases out so that the when you're skimming on the next day so there's no suction, that works. Um, I've never I've never liked the idea of putting PVA in finish because anyone that's ever tried to skim over wet PVA will know that it clumps up and goes like flipping chewing gums. <laughs> I've, I've never even considered the thought of putting PVA in, um, in my plaster. That said, if you skim over an SBR when it's too wet and the SBR mixes in with the plaster, it doesn't clump up like um, like what PVA does to it. So anyone that's ever done that will know exactly what I'm talking about. It just, it's horrendous. So I'm not going to put any in the finishing plaster, uh, but I have put it in base coat plasters. Uh, Muhammad Ali, yes, Kurt, good evening, mate. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Uh, Ed, Nankville, done and tried it. What did you try, Ed? What did you try? I forget where. When, when you guys comment, there is a slight delay before I see them. So if I'm talking about something, you say done and tried it, it might not come through when you've just sent it. So, um, ah, uh, okay, Neil, how about, um, Neil, just wait there a second. MC Shopping Centre. Let me just confirm. Your name is Neil, is it? I'm, I'm sure I remember right that you said your name was Neil. So just, just confirm, mate. Just tell me it is. I'm definitely saying the right name. Uh, how about giving a patch a thorough soaking with water just to see what happens, like when you're blending in? Just a thought. Okay, yeah. That's a good show. Because um, I wanted to do, as well, I wanted to do a, a panel that was, I wanted to do a panel that was bone dry just so we can see how weak it actually is with no primer. Uh, but, yeah, we'll do that one. We'll do a wet panel as well. Uh, dry panel and wet panel. No primer. Okay. Um, uh, Ah, <laughs> MC, MC Shopping Centre, <laughs> Keith. Oh. Right, that's a nice name, Keith. Um, I've already programmed, programmed you in as Neil now. <laughs> you know when you sort of like put, put a name to someone and that's it, it sticks in your head. So, um, okay, Keith. Uh, uh, Tudor Dimitrov. Tell me that has got to be a Polish name. <laughs> if it is, Jin Dobry. Uh, hi, mate. I plaster my ceiling over bonding coat and will be dry after a few days. What would be the best to use to make my life easier, pal? We're going to find out, mate. <laughs> We're going to do a little test to find out. I personally will give it a good coat of SBR, mate. Uh, Give it a good drink of SBR um, and then give it a good few hours to, to soak in and cure a little bit. Maybe give it two coats of SBR and then skim it after that. Oh, um, ideally, you want to be skimming over bond in the same day, though. That's what it's designed to do. And then you don't need any sealer. You can just put it on, put the bonded on. As soon as it starts to turn and get dark patches, skim straight over it. Tell me if I'm right, though, uh, Mr. Dimitrov. Tell me if you are Polish, because that sounds very Polish, that surname. Uh, Omar, for suction, what if you had different pieces, prime them on floor, make a little dam or something so you can make a little puddle uh, of measured water and time how long it takes to be absorbed? Mm. Yeah, I know what you're saying, Omar. What I'm thinking is I want to I wanna see which, which primer helps the plaster stay sort of wet. For workability, not so much because I don't think it's, yeah, yeah, it's, I don't think it'll. I'd have to sort of let it dry to absorb it because I don't think wet plaster would absorb any more water into it or not not enough for me to be able to measure with me with my eyes, you know. Um, 
Jordan. Great shout, Omar. Yeah, it is a good shout. I would like to try something like that, but I don't, I don't know. Unless I'm being thick and you can think of a, you know, how you ultimately measure it. But I know what you're saying. I mean, I can make a little dam with um, some some um, plumber's putty, you know, around the edge or some silicon or something, just to cause a little bit. So we, could, oh, we only need a little tiny bit of water, don't we? Uh, Anthony has put sand in the PVA and SBR. Uh, works great in both. Um, bum, bum. <sighs> I've been on a job the last few days and the customer brought their pre-grit. Yeah, I've got some exterior pre-grit. I wasn't going to bother with that, but it's exterior stuff but i suppose we could give that a whirl as well um ryan mc key the walls then use the sbr should surely be a case for sbr yeah I, I, do you know what ah to dimitrov bulgarian my friend our oh, bulgarian wait there um Bulgar slave priato um edna Edna Chashabiri, no lit. <laughs> Slave Priato. Yeah, hello, my friend. Edna Chashabiri, one glass of beer, no lit, no ice. <laughs> I remember when I was in Bulgaria. That was the only thing I learned how to order one beer with no ice. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Um, Jordan Morris. The brand was Alpha Chem. Oh, yes, I've seen that. Orange colour was really nice to skim over. Not used it before. Yeah, you don't see much Alpha Chem stuff around. It all seems to be Everbold or Seeker, doesn't it? You know, um, Muhammad Ali Kurt. We recently fit a hole in the wall fire. I skimmed the full breast chimney in part thanks to you, and the customer was really happy. Fantastic. <laughs> um, However, a week later, we got a stinker of a complaint that the plaster cracked. Have you ever used fire-resistant plaster? And what's it like? Any other advice as this is our everyday job, shares? Oh, yeah, plastering around um, fireplaces is... Um, Vitkus do a heat-resistant plaster. You can use Vitkus. It's, it's cement-coloured. Um, that is ideal for it but i'll tell you now you're gonna have to practice with the stuff mate because it's not nice to use and it doesn't set like finishing plaster it's more of like a, an all day sort of job so it takes forever to go off um and it slumps when it's on thick it's it's yeah vitkus heat resistant plaster um that's what you want to be looking for mate but yeah gypsum based plasters um Board finish, multi finish, and all that. As soon as they get anywhere near heat, they're just no good. Um, Michael Dix, how are you, my mate? John Mir, do you ever mix SBR and cement together on smooth concrete walls before rendering? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Um, like I, I, I splatter it on and stipple it, you know, um, just to give it a bit of a key. <laughs> Uh, any moon, Kurt. The more you play with it, the wetter it gets. I know, mate. I know. <laughs> too late in the evening for you to be saying stuff like that, mate. Dave Smith, I Kurt, um, from Fine Finish Plastering. Uh, I Kurt, yeah. How are you doing, Dave? You okay, mate? I had to read that again. Um, Andy McIntosh, handful of bonding in some SBR creates a type of grit that dries quick. Okay. Okay, um, fun with Pip. Uh, you are the goat of plastering, mate. Um, like a plastering encyclopedia. Now, I remember the first time I never called me a goat. <laughs> I wanted to give it a crack. But I've since learned it's uh, the greatest of all time. So I'll take that. Cheers, mate. I'm not. I'm just, um, I'm just flipping it. I just like to mess around and experiment with things. But I appreciate you saying it. Thank you, mate. Uh, do I wall adhesive or knaf, knauf, naf, however you want to pronounce it? Everyone says it different. Uh, which is better? 
Um, I know that that knauf stuff smells nicer. That's all I'll say. It smells sweet. Uh, Ed Nankfil use lime around fireplaces. Ah, Ed. Ed. Okay. That might be another test, Ed. <laughs> Let's just write this down. Uh, future tests when we are testing with um, lime wash and distemper, we can also do a heat test, can't we, and see uh, lime for heat. We'll get the, um, the thermometers and the blow torches out and see what can withstand what in future videos. Uh, Tony C, Kirk, what's best for advertising for getting more work? Oh, mate. <sighs> market yourself on social media. Don't market the plastering. So usually you have to be in my group. You have to pay me to get this information. But I'll tell you something now. A little bit of free advice for you. Social media is absolutely free. You can reach thousands and thousands of people for nothing every single day through your social media. Now, there's different types of social media that you can use. There's, there's Instagram, there's TikTok, there's Facebook. I'm not going to tell you, but you have to figure this out yourself. Think what is location specific, okay? So something like TikTok, I mean, you're sharing it to the whole of the country and you're not going to drive to Scotland to skim a bedroom ceiling if you live in London, are you? So think of what social media is location specific. Then don't start spamming with loads of plastering posts because people aren't interested you're better off being sort of an inspirational person that people like. If people like you and they know what you do, they'll buy from you. If people don't, if people don't know who you are, why should they buy from you? You know, if you've got 50 plasters to pick from, why would they pick Tony? You know, what makes you stand apart? If they can see on social media how much of a lovely fella you are, a nice guy, a family guy, or whatever, then that makes them feel safer going for you. There you go. Not answer any more questions on that. Uh, Dave Smith, Kirk, does anyone know what's in half time? Yeah, I reckon. Um, I reckon I know. Um, and people always put it in the comments. And you know what? There's, there's. It doesn't take much to work out what accel accelerates plaster. Uh, the same for cement. You know, you can you can buy you can buy in bulk the stuff. I like using half time. You can go and buy the same chemicals that are in it online. But it's to what percentage? Because you can buy different things and then a different percentage. So I've bought, before I really started using half time all the time, I bought different bits and bobs. And I was having to put scoops in, like big scoops of the stuff, because I only got like 2%. Like out of the whole stuff, the the, the actual chemical that does its working part was only 2%, and it wasn't enough. So, look, for me, half time is it's sort of that cheap. What was it cost for the sachet? A couple of quid. I mean, let's just say, for instance, it's not, but let's just say it was a fiver. I'm doing a job on the way home, and I can finish an hour and a half earlier, but I lose a fiver. It's a no-brainer. I mean, that's just it's a fiver. It's just gone. It's done. And it's already measured out in a little waterproof sachet. The thing of it is, if you buy a big bag of it, every time you're opening it up and all the rest of it, once moisture starts getting to it, you know, in damp environment, oh, just forget it. So yeah, for me, I just um, I just buy the little sachets. But yeah, there's loads of different things that accelerate plaster. To be honest with you, there's there's a, there's a few different chemicals that do it. Um, let's have a look under Phil Hazelton. Uh, why don't you wear a white boiler suit like the plasters did uh, when I started work in 1979? Why don't I wear one? A, a white ball of suit. <laughs> uh, people probably think I'm turning up to murder them. <laughs> Carrier bag cell taped on my feet. <laughs> in the uh, putting all the sheets out in the house. Um, I don't know, mate. I just, I just, I just wear anything that you know. I, I'll be honest with you. I just get whatever out of my wardrobe, put it on. That's it. I'm just good to go. Uh, I used to have to. I tell you. I tell you. I used to have to wear a boiler suit when I worked with my dad. Because my dad's got such a OCD problem, he used to have us 
dress up me and my brother because we would get plaster on us. We'd have to put a boiler suit on to get in his van to go home. If we wanted to sit in the front of the van, you had to put this boiler suit on so that you wouldn't get a speck of dust anywhere in the front of his van. And even then he was watching you whilst he, if you were moving too much whilst he was driving, he was looking at you, you know. We had to take our boots off, put them in the back, have our little slippers and all that to be able to get in the front. My dad, I love the bones of him, is a flipping lunatic. In the end, I just I'll sit in the back. Forget it, I'll sit in the back. Now the, the back of the van, every Friday, there's people that know me dad that watch me channel right, and they'll confirm this. Every Friday we used to get back to our house on the driveway everything had to come out the back of the van everything and i mean every single item had to come out the back of the van used to get hoovered because my dad always carpeted the back of his van it had to be carpeted it'd get hoovered and then everything would go back into its nice little neat home where it lived every friday even if there was nothing in even if we hadn't carried the bag of plaster because we'd been on site all week and there'd been nothing in the back of the van it still had to happen because his brain wouldn't be able to rest until it was done and whilst i'm doing that my brother would be scrubbing the outside of the van, cleaning it. And he'd have to get on the roof and clean the roof as well. So, so mate, my days are wearing boy suits. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Bring back bad memories for me. Um, uh, Muhammad Ali, we do media wars nationwide. If we ever do any round your way, uh, can give you the skimming job of if you're up for Kirk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give us a shout. Um, Give me a shout, Mohammed. I'll come and uh, I'll come and have a look for you, mate. I'll give you an extortionate price. <laughs> We're only messing. Just a thousand. Um, Michael Lawton, hello, Kirk. Smashing college at the minute. Thanks for your videos. Cheers, mate. Fantastic, mate. Fantastic. Make sure you get a distinction. Um, Mike, it's good to roll on SBR cement. Not great for the roller, though. Okay, I've got cement out there in the workshop, so we can uh, we can do a little test patch of SPR and cement together if you want. Uh, I know Stuart from Trial Talk recommends doing that. If you if you watch other plasters on YouTube, um, there's a lovely bloke called Stuart. Um, in fact, when I started my YouTube channel, Stu was literally my go-to man for advice because we're in the same sort of niche. We just connected, and he was constantly giving me little tips from YouTube videos. You know. Um, microphones and all different things to help me out like flipping fantastic fella so go and give him a, sub, a subscribe actually he's if, if, if you like plastering find trial talk youtube trial talk flipping lovely fella uh he recommends using cement um mixed with sbr so we'll do a test of that we'll test Stu's way and see if he's uh if he's chatting or if it actually works um let's write that down SBR. i'm gonna have to buy more cement board at this rate aren't i and imagine how uh, it takes about six bags of plaster to do this test. Um, uh, right, let's have a look. Jordan Corey's hi, Kirk. Could you add plasticizer to plaster to make it more pliable, like when you add it to mortar? We'll find out. Not not on this test, but on another one. Um, plasticizer. This is good, this, because you know what, actually? This is like giving me more ideas for content down the line. So it's, uh, it's helping me think of ideas for videos. Plasticizer in finish. Now, I've tried different things in finish. A handful of drywall adhesive when you mix your finish actually uh, makes it a bit creamier. Um, although I don't do that anymore. And... I used to put a bit of lime in the finish, but it, 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 I found that when you put a bit of hydrated lime in the finish, the surface of the finish would tear easier when I was polishing, so I stopped messing around with lime. Um, Jorex Jim, hope you're all well. Cheers, mate. Where have I gone now? I've just shot straight to the bottom here. Right. Jenny Mack, I've used SPR and sharp sand for grit. Uh, the sand sinks in the bucket. Just got to whisk it around with a stick or something, but it does work. Okay. Andy McIntosh, lime is definitely good around openings for log burners. Right, okay. We're going to do the test of the lime. Do me a favour, though, lads. But you guys that are recommending the lime, what lime are we talking about? Are you using hydraulic lime or hydrated lime? And what are you mixing it with? Are you, are you using it with one-to-one -one sand? Tell me exactly what you're mixing around the fireplaces. 
that's worked for you so I can test it when we do the heat test down the line. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Andy, let us know what you've been doing with it, mate. Uh, Mike, we've got five great old Artex ceilings to go over tomorrow. Very deep pattern stuff. Reckon it will be easier but longer to three coat them. Um, I always seem to be able to get over most Artex ceilings with two coats. But some fellas like to put the first coat 50-50 uh, of bonding. That bulks the first coat up a little bit. So you could do that. You could do it a 50-50 bonding and finish the first coat, get over it. I always like to speed skim it then, let it go off, let it get firm, and then skim it. But <sighs> I mean, you could three-coat it. That's what it takes to get it covered. Just check, make sure it's well adhered first, whatever you do. Um, Charlie Elmer, I've been plastering two years. Your videos help a lot. Spot on, Charlie. Glad you like them, mate. Um... Uh, Tadar Dimitrov, um, the Drav Kirk, Nazdrav, you speak great Bulgarian, that's all you need mostly. <laughs> Cheers, mate. I'll try my best. I'll try two coats of SBR and hopefully, um, won't be such a nightmare. You're making really helpful videos, mate. Thanks. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on, mate. Um, bye, Mr. Meow's tub. Same stuff for everything. Multi finish bonding dabbing. Okay. Uh don't know who Mr. Meow is, but Gary Stewart, interesting, a nice watch. I've been plastering for 46 years. Fair play, Gary. Fair play, mate. Um I'm speeding up setting times, Mr. Meow's good kit. Okay, Mr. Meow's. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've never tried. Uh, any other sort of branded stuff for accelerating plaster. Um, I've done all that with people always say to me in my videos, fill a handful of cement in. I've done it, I've tried it. <laughs> I know it works. Dirty water, used to keep it in the van, but ultimately, dirty water can weaken the strength of your plaster. So, I don't really like using dirty water. Uh, Mr. Meow, I, I should probably give it a whirl, but ultimately, I'll probably just stick with easy mix products. Only because, sort of, I've got to know the fella that makes the stuff. Now, he doesn't sponsor me. He doesn't endorse me videos or, or anything like that. He's just a nice bloke. He's just sound, Mark. Like I say, I've, I've, if you already know, I've been, I've rendered his house for him. The fella that makes half time and extra time. Um, he's just a, he's just a flipping all-round top bloke. So I just like buying his stuff just because, you know, it, it's like, you know, supporting your mate, isn't it? So, <sighs> Let's have a look. <sighs> Jay, I had a brief stint with a plaster when I left school, but we only ever one coat plastered. Since watching your videos, you always two coat. Does this make much of a difference? Yes, it does, mate. Two coating does really make it a lot nicer, to be honest with you. If you go over, I've I've done loads of one coating as well. I've been there and done that on site. Um, and sometimes if you know if walls are lovely, then I've one coated them. But um, ultimately, I just like two. Um, it is nicer to work when there's two coats on. Oh, this, I'll tell you what, I'm doing this on my laptop. It's a bit of a nightmare. It's, when I scroll down, it skips through loads of comments dead quick. So, Ian Chandler, um, use a hook scale to measure the strength needed to pull the scrim boards, the, uh, pull the scrim off boards, the scale used to measure fish weight by hand. That's exactly what I'm using, Ian. You're spot on. Me and you are thinking on the same lines, mate. Uh, that's the that's, that's the scale I've got. Uh, I think it's digital, um, the one that's coming, and it goes up to 50 kilograms. I think 50 kilograms on a little piece of scrim is enough. If you think a bag of plastic is 25, so I'm just I'm trying to think in my head if I had a little hook and I could with a hand two bags of plastic off a bit of scrim, or would it rip the scrim out? I think 50k is enough. Um, sounds like a great bloke to buy a van off, Omar. Yes, yeah, <laughs> sounds like my old fella. Yeah, he's um, flipping. Ev that's the thing with my dad. Everything. If you go to his house, when I go and see him, take your shoes off, you know, and you put them, put your shoes down, and I, I catch him. He goes back in the hallway and, and puts your shoes together, you know, and tucks the laces in the tops, and you know they all have to be facing the same direction. You can't just. Kick Shoes off. That'd be crazy. Hey, by the way, guys, I've never done a live 
on my laptop before so just tell me am i loud enough because i can turn the volume up on my microphone as well so i don't know if you're struggling to hear me or not because i've got it on quite quiet now so just let me know if the sounds okay um john almond remember the guy that labored for me back in the early 80s he wore the whites i'll tell you what i am going to do talking about wearing stuff for work i've been trying to set up the shop on me channel don't buy anything from the shop by the way just yet because it's not it's not ready yet um there's a few different shops that i can attach to it um they all charge extortionate prices as well you know 20 quid for the freaking bobble hat and 20 quid for the t-shirt which i think is far too much but anyway i can sort of set the percentages on it um i'm happy to not have any money out of it you know maybe a quid or something i'm not really that bothered um but we'll just I'm going to set it all as cheap as possible. I'm going to make some stuff. I'm going to make some T-shirts and hats and stuff like that that I want to wear for me. So I'm going to make them with different slogans and that on them. Um, and then see, if you know, if you guys want one, then you'll be able to get one as well. But I'm ultimately using it as a little way of being able to make my own stuff that I can buy myself because I don't get it for free. I'll have to click on the link and buy it. So that's what I'm going to do anyway. So I, I will be having some... Because at the minute, I'm always wearing just different random tops or I'm advertising Hughes Grey or the Render Centre. I'm going to make some T-shirts of, of sort of what I want wrote on them. Um, don't worry, they're not going to be Kirk Johnstone, the plaster of my details on the back of them. So everyone, all your customers are ringing me. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Look, that's not going to be the case. Um, John Almond always said that the men in white will put it right. <laughs> yeah, fair play, mate. That's a good shout. Uh, Michael Reed, would you ever go into business with your brother? <sighs> we spoke about this, me and my brother. We did speak about it. Um, I personally think I love the bones of my brother. We are completely different. My dad is, my brother is very similar to my dad. Doesn't he? Hates me saying that as well, but he is very similar to my dad. Um, I think we clash a little bit in a work environment. We're good to do a job together now and then, you know, sound. But you know when you, you know when you work with someone and you settle in, you settle in and then, and then you, your true sort of colours come out. I think we clash. Um, we used to clash when we worked with my dad. And, and you know what it's like? When you're younger and you fall out, you have a row, you fix it up, don't you? Quite, you know, it's two days later, you're out again. But when you get older, like, you know, in your thirties, and you and you fall out of someone, and you that's it. I'm not working with you. You know, it can be like a flipping. So I wouldn't want to lose him. So I don't think it'd be a good shout to set up with my brother, um, personally. And 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 we spoke about that as well. So yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, sounds fine. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, Keith, me and my brother half kill each other when working together. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, perfect. I can hear you sound. Cheers, Mr. Loyal. You're a gentleman. Um, DJ will have on the trowel on the T-shirts, Kirk. I'll have one. Yeah, what I'm thinking is, <clears throat> another T-shirt, I'm going to have a little, little tiny, you know, on this side here, on the trowel, but I want to have some sort of um slogan, you know, something on them, maybe different ones, whether we put something funny on there, um, or something more professional. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really come up with any great ideas yet. Um, but we'll do something. Ah, there we go. Sorry, I'm just going back up the comments here. Uh, Andy McIntosh, hydraulic lime. The mix is typically one part lime, two and a half part sand. Okay, let's get that lime for heat. What, um, when you say hydraulic lime, sorry to keep pecking yet, Andy. Um, what hydraulic lime are you using? NHL five, three, or is it three and a half? I can't remember the last time I bought some. Or two. Um, 
do you remember which strength hydraulic line you were using as well, Andy? Because um, I'll have to order it. You see, they don't stock it in my builders' merchants. I'll have to order this lime in. So if I'm going to get hydraulic, it'd be good if I knew what type. Um, well, I'm just writing this down, by the way. Sorry, guys. I can't I can't write and talk at the same time because my brain just doesn't work like that. And it's what did you mix it with? One to two and a half. Okay. Steve M, when I've used SBR whilst rendering, I ended up splashing it all over the place. Any tips when applying it on internal jobs? Uh, I use a roller, thick power roller, and don't push too hard on the roller because it drips out. It's, it's basically like water. So we just use a roller and very lightly roll it on, you know. It does go quite far, and I use it neat as well. Um, Darren Andrews, uh, half times aluminium sulfate, 17. I was waiting for somebody else to say it, mate. Yeah, the stuff I got was 2%, and I was having to use flipping loads of it. I was thinking, I don't need much finish because half of this is aluminium sulfate that I'm putting in. You know, I could sort of just only mix half a bag of finish and still fill the bucket because the rest of it was aluminium sulfate. Um, James Carr, hey, Kurt, not caught alive for ages, but still catch up. On all of your vids, um, being stowed off lately. Always use neat SBR now. Keep the great content coming. <laughs> Spot on. There's another one of me converts. <laughs> Cheers, James. Um, right, let's go down to the bottom now. Let's see where we, where we go. Uh, Andy McIntosh. Sound is fine. Okay. Uh, be loyal. Have on the trial. On the yeah. Uh, Omar, take a bit and go in neat. <laughs> that's um, that's a good shout. I was thinking there's all sorts of different slogans you could put on, couldn't you? you know. Um, I don't know. I don't, I like that one though. Take a bit and go in neat. Yeah, one of my flipping sayings. Um, be loyal, don't work with family or no go. I know, I tell you what, I'll do every now and then. I like working with my dad, bring him. It ultimately, cost me a fortune because I tell, in fact, I'll tell you what happens when we with my dad. From time to time, I like bringing it because it's, it's the only time we get to really bond together, me and my old fellow, without being in the pub. And then if you sort of go to the pub, then you know, after a few jars, things you know, you get a bit so. To have a wholesome bit of time spent with my old fella, I'll ask him, you know, come and give me a lift on a job. Um, and he doesn't do much, you know, he just comes in and he'll, he's got a bad leg, so he ends up sitting down most of the time and just sort of talking to me or passing me things and what have you. But I'll tell you what he does sometimes. He'll ring me up and he'll say, uh, right, I need, um, I've got some MOT work getting done on my car. I could do with a few quid. And I'll say, okay, Dad, do you want to come in for a day this week? Yeah, if you don't mind, yeah. So I'll look in the diary and I'll go, okay, Thursday looks good. I'll come and, come and jump in Thursday. Oh, I go shopping on a Thursday. I'm like, right, um, okay, give us a second then. Go back in the diary. Um, okay, Friday. Oh, well, I've got to go and see such and such on Friday about budgies, you know, because he, he's breeding birds at the minute, you know, like budgies and finches and all this sort of stuff. Um, got to go and see such. I'm like... But I, and he goes, but I'm free Tuesday. I'm like, right, okay. You want you want to come to work on Tuesday, right? So fine. So I look, like, what can I, what have I got for me to have Tuesday? Like, okay, yeah, yeah, fine. Just come in Tuesday. And then I say to him, right, um, I'll give you you know X amount of money. Uh right. Well, really, I needed um such and such amount because you know that's what it's going to cost me. MOT. I'm like, right. Okay, why didn't you just phone me and tell me I'm coming to work on Tuesday and I want X amount of money? <laughs> that would have just been easier, wouldn't it? You know, so so then he comes in with me, but um, yeah, he's flipping. I liked it. I like it like that, you know. But sometimes I'll jump in with my brother, give him a pull on, you know, pull on a job, or he'll jump in with me for a day, or or my dad, you know. Um, be good actually if we could get the three of us together. I mean, it wouldn't. It's flipping chaos because. It's, Everyone thinks they're right, and we all want to do it their way. So I end up being the one that just gets I, because they're both very similar, my dad and my brother. And I end up being the one that I just get told what to do. That them two are in charge, and then it always works out that 
doing the most as well. So I'm the one doing all the graft and getting told what to do. <laughs> like a little pair of Hitlers. Uh, anime half times a salty mate. I'll take your word for it. Uh, anyone spend all day plastering and come home and listen to guy about plastering? Yeah, sorry, Paul. <laughs> sorry, mate. Uh, you can go and listen to the missus if you want, mate. Um, Keith, can you do the t shirts in plaster pink color so it looks like I've not dropped any on myself? <laughs> yes, uh, good shout. Lorik said, hello, Stephen Hayes. What's the name of the adhesive agent you use in your videos, not PVA? Okay, mate. S-B-R. Sierra Bravo Romeo. Um, <sighs> Styrofoam Butadane Rubber or something like that. I can't think. I can't. I like to know all these things, but I forget as well. <laughs> PVA. Polyvinyl Acetate. Um. I don't know what blue grit's made of. I haven't investigated that, you know. Sometimes I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and have to find these things out, you know. But um, uh, SBR I use, mate. Mark Lawrence, even thanks for giving me the motivation to get my head out of my bum and get back in the game. Spot on, Mark. <laughs> um, John Almond, hydraulic limes, so-called because they set on the water. Correct, mate, yeah. Uh, are made in the same way as non-hydraulic lime, but using different limestones. They are sold as hydrated lime and have the comments cut off. Um, the loyal put I use. Yes, the loyal. I had to read that before I figured out where you were going. I'll tell the story, actually. <laughs> I'll talk because of the... Probably a lot of people watching this live that don't know this story. So you'll like this one. The, what have I done? Oh, no. I've just pressed something. Wait there a second. If you can still see me, I'll be back. Um, oh, no. What have I done? Uh, there we go. How do we get back on this? There we go. I'm a, I'm a, what? I don't know what I've done. Right. Okay. So where's the mad thing? I've clicked the button on the mouse. And I, I can't see me now, but I can see your comments because I can, I can see John Albans just said, you're still there. Um, so anyway, now I'm, <laughs> now I don't know what I've done anyway. But anyway, as long as you guys can see me, I can't see nothing now. I can only see the comments. I'm actually watching the live back myself, which is absolutely bizarre. Um, right, the, the comment about the vibrator, let me tell you about that. Let me tell you about that. Um, where Where is he? Where is the... Be loyal. Put So be loyal's talking about putting a slogan on the T-shirt. Put, I use a vibrator to put holes in the plasterboard. Right. Now, this is the thing. I had a lad work for me once. And what? He used to have his own name for everything, okay? So, <clears throat> different tools and what have you. I'll, for instance, I'll say, go and get the straight edge out of the van, right? That was the big ruler. That's what he called it. Don't want to get the big ruler. Spot and stand, he called it the table. You know, I'll get the table, you know, for the plaster. I'm like, it's a spot and stand. It doesn't matter how many times you told him. That, he just had his own name for stuff, and that was it. Now, the multi-tool, or the oscillator, or whatever you want to call it, he called that the vibrator. It's just what he called it. So, because it vibrates and it cuts, right? So we're doing a job, and I'm cutting through, like, sound block boards. They're, they're super dense, aren't they? You know, and you're slicing it and slicing it, you know, trying to cut the sockets out. Now, I only have one wall. We were just soundproofing one wall. And it was for an old boy, this old fella. And I'm cutting, I'm trying to cut through to cut this socket out. And you know what it's like trying to cut through sound block boards? 15 mil, pain in the backside. So whilst he can see me struggling, the old boy stood at the door, he's watching. And the lad's sort of been getting water in and out because we're going to get this wall dabbed and then we're going to skim it. So he's sort of getting set up. So he's seen what I'm doing. 
and it just blurred sound. Do you want me to get the vibrator out of the van? So <laughs> I'm like, turns around, and the old boy's just looking at me like, what? what? I didn't say anything. I just turned around and carried on. I said, no, I'm all right. I'll do it by hand. So I just carried on cutting the socket. And they heard the old fellow say to him, what does he do with the vibrator? And the lad went, oh, he, he, he just makes holes in the plasterboard with it and walked off. Right. Now, I never put the old boy straight. I just left it at that. So, so somewhere out there in the world, there's an old fella that's probably got an image in his mind of me. <laughs> Big flipping rubber root, <laughs> making holes in plasterboards. Oh, flipping heck. What a lunatic. I should have probably told him, shouldn't I? But I just thought it was funny to leave it. Um, uh, Howard Morris. Uh, put I'm paid from the neck up on your T-shirts. Yes, yeah, good shout, actually, Howard. Um, you know, with, uh, I don't want to miss anyone's comments out, so I'm just going to go for the top now and just wish for these comments. Uh, sure, it's NHL 2. Uh, internal plus ah oh, perfect NHL two. Well, let's get that then. NHL two. Okay, that is what we will test. Wait a second, man. No, it doesn't do that. Um, I'm just sorry. Whilst I'm talking to you boys, I'm just trying to see if um, if there's anything I can do to get. No. I'm trying to see if there's somewhere I can click so I can get back on the... Um... Doesn't matter. It is what it is. Right. Uh... Gentlemen, do you have to get all three of you together on a job and film it? <laughs> Trust me, mate. It probably would make for good viewing, but it'd probably be the end of my YouTube career because um... oh, me dad... He's a different breed, mate. He's, he's, yeah, he has his own way of doing things, and uh, you have to just do it his way, and that's it. You okay, sweetheart? Sorry, my daughter's is tapping on the window. What's up, baby? Okay, you you into bed? I love you. Good night, chicken. I'll come and talk you in later. Okay. Sweet dreams. Tell your mum to make me a coffee. Oh, okay. Don't worry then. Go to bed. See you in the morning. No, no, it's okay. I've got to go. I'm live. Talking to these guys. <laughs> I know. I've pressed the button and I don't know what I've done. But anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you. <laughs> Love you. So oh, babe. Oh. Um, right. South Oxfordshire plus Finn Howdy partner, where's your beer? No beer for me today, mate. I've uh, I've just been on the bottles of water today. Um Stephen Hayes, cheers, buddy, watching from south west coast of Ireland. Spot on, spot on. Where did I go in Ireland? Um, Punchestown Racecourse um, was the last place I was in in Ireland. Punchestown Racecourse. Um, I tell, that was funny as well, actually. So, my daughter's, um, my middle daughter especially, is into show jumping, and she was um, in Pony Club, they call it. It's like it's like, um, it's like scouts, but for kids with horses, right? So, there's, there's branches of Pony Club all over the place, and they had a an international competition and it was held in Punchers Town. So that's why we were over there. We had to get the ferry with the horse and take it over and all the rest of it. So we're over there for a few days. And I found in Ireland, every pub I went into, everyone was sound. You know, you could have a good laugh anywhere you went, have a good laugh. Now I went out on my own for a bit of a, bit of a little expedition. So all the sort of like all the other mums and dads, they were sort of staying in, you know, because they're not quite as exciting as me. I wanted to go on a little pub crawl, and I wanted to get the best Guinness in Ireland or in, in that area. I wanted to go and get, you know, the best pints. You can't go to Ireland and not have Guinness, can you? So that's what I was that's what I was on to. So the first pub I go into, I said to him, look, where's the where's the, the best pint of Guinness round here? And he told me the name of the pub. I can't think what it was called now. Let's just say it was the Golden Fleece. I, don't, I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, go to this pub. This is where you're going to get the best Guinness from. Okay, sound. So I had a drink in there. Everyone's having a good laugh at me. Sound. Goes to the next pub. I'm making my way towards the Golden Fleece now. Going to the next pub. Same again. I just asked them, you know, where's the best Guinness round? Yeah, that's where you're going. 
Golden Fleece, right? Had a good laugh of everyone. This happened about three or four pubs that I went into on the way to the Golden Fleece. Couldn't fault the people. Straight away, the minute they heard your accent, they were just on you, you know, having a laugh with you, you're having a banter. I was having a great time. I get to the Golden Fleece. <clears throat> Straight in, orders a Guinness, and there's a fellow sat at the bar, so I've just started a conversation with him. Flipping spot on. I had a great laugh with him. He was sound as a pound. I was talking to him for about half an hour. He finishes drinking, anyway, he had to go, so he goes. And then other people come into the bar and getting served, and I'm trying to talk to him. No one wanted to know me. I'm like, I, uh, I used to meet you, you know, are you from around here, what have you? No one wanted to speak to me at all. <laughs> I was thinking, this is the best pub, it's the best Guinness, but it's got the most miserable people. What's going on? It was like all of a sudden there was like a, you know, a, a target painted on me back, right? By now, I've had about six pints. I just said to the barman, what's going on, mate? I said, have I, like, do I stink or something? I said, because no one's talking to me. He said, yeah. He said, um, that fella you were talking to, he's like um, chief of the police. <laughs> so, no one knows who you are. Everyone just thinks you're the copper. <laughs> That doesn't help. I'm asking them questions like, who are you and where are you from? <laughs> They're all just thinking, oh, so, yeah, that, that sort of spoiled my experience because then no one would talk to me. I mean, not that everyone was sort of like against the police. I don't know what this fellow was like. Maybe he was a mean policeman in his time. I don't know. But either way, no one wanted to know me in there after then. So I, I felt like I almost had to get up on the bar and announce I'm a plaster. I'm not in the police. I'm not CID or anything, you know. But anyway... Uh, yeah, that was my experience of Ireland. But the Guinness was nice. I did enjoy it. Uh, Stephen Hayes, cheers, buddy. Right. Uh, Daniel Salero, Evening Kirk, Ed Nankville. Uh, 500 grams of calcium chloride will accelerate cement. Yes, spot on. Um, what else does it as well? Calcium sulfate. Um, I was looking into this the other day because I was trying to figure out what was in um, the K-Ren accelerator, and I think that's calcium chloride as well because the pH levels is the same on the calcium chloride as what is on the back of the K-Ren accelerator tub, although on the tub it doesn't tell you that it's calcium chloride. Obviously, they, they don't tell you that. It just says pH. I think it's pH 5 or 25. I can't remember. But anyway, um, three hours to one hour. Yes, mate, yeah, spot on. Uh, John Almond, uh, you still you still there, mate? Oh, great. Okay, so this is everyone saying that you can still see me. <sighs> yeah, it says turn the camera back on. <laughs> I don't know how to. I'm, I've got the YouTube dashboard thing up. I don't know how to get back into the live. I can see the live. I can see me talking now. There's like a, a three second delay on it, but um, that's all I can see. Um, Right. Danny Turner. All right, pal. Uh, Jelly Bean, great channel, mate. Been in a month now. Fantastic, mate. Welcome to the crazy farm. <laughs> Jorex Jim. <laughs> Evening, mate. Justin Bresland. Hi, mate. Been watching your channel for a while. Top job. Thank you, Justin. You're a gentleman. Muhammad Ali, it's not easy being a premium, buying a premium message on here. I tried doing it in Google and asking for two forms of ID. <laughs> yeah, so oh, fantastic. Look at this. Getting a, uh, getting. Look, there's you. <laughs> there's, a, there's a delay on it. I pressed the button and I've cocked it up. So, so by the way, anyway, this is Isabel, my 11 year old daughter. 12. Just 12, sorry. 12. Bad dad award. Pop your, head in, pop your head in and say hello. Just don't worry about being weird. Just say hello. There she is. <laughs> it's weird for us because we've got to watch this three seconds later. Anyway, all right, sweetheart. You're going to go to bed, yeah? Yeah. Okay, kiss, kiss. I love you. Good night, chicken. Love you. See you in the, in the morning. All right, babe. Um... <sighs> oh, a few guys said hi as well. Just let you know. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. Love you. Love you too, sweetheart. Good night. Um, uh, 
Uh, Danny Greer, evening, mate. There we go. Danny's a local lad to me. We cross paths all the time at the Builders Merchants, don't we, Dan? Um, right, where are we up to here now? Sorry, I'm gonna, do you know what, guys? It's uh, 10 o'clock, so I'm going to blitz through these messages because I've got to be up early tomorrow. Tomorrow, there's a, a new lad starting with me tomorrow. Um, so he's coming in for a bit of a trial day because Kieran's gone, hasn't he? So uh, we'll see how the new lad gets on tomorrow. Um, I want to be up early. Um, I've told him to be at mine early, so I want to be obviously a lot earlier than him and be ready for when he gets here. Uh, so I'm going to have to turn it in soon and get some shut eye. Uh, Muhammad Ali, it's not easy buying a premium message on here. I tried it. Oh, yeah, sorry, I read that, didn't I? <laughs> um, turn camera on using the laptop. Mate, I'm not that fluent with um, with with computers and stuff. I don't want to press something and, and close it all down before I sort of said goodnight. So I'm just going to, if you guys can see me, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, Omar started the apprentice trials yet. No, mate, that's it tomorrow. It begins tomorrow. Uh, he doesn't know yet. He's got to also be a cameraman as well as an apprentice. So um, MC Shopping. Oh, Keith, sorry, Keith. Saying hi to our, our Isabel. Uh, Daniel Salerno, have you ever used SBR? It's SBR, um, Sierra Bravo Romeo, not SPR. Um, not not pulling it up, by the way. I'm just, just letting you know. Uh, have you ever used SBR on plasterboard to give you extra time as I'm new to plastering and find it helped? Didn't know if it would or not. Cheers, Gert. Yeah, there's... There shouldn't be any suction on plasterboard, really, if the board's new. But that said, if you put plasterboard up and it's been up a while, then it does start to become high suction. So um, I think they spray a vapour on it when it's made. It holds the suction back, I think. Um, but no, I'd, so, sometimes we have SBR boards just to give... If I've joined up to something, I want to give even even suction right across. So I've done it then, but I don't I don't very often see all plasterboards. Um, Stephen Thomas, evening pal. I've watched the monetization video from way back. Fancy giving us an update? <laughs> yes. Do you want to know how much money I'm earning, Steve? Um. I'll tell you now. I'll tell you now. Uh, let me just read these other two comments, and then we'll talk about YouTube money. Uh, Agent P, that's me, thinking of bang some SBR in the pre-grit to make it hang a bit on the mega sets. What do you think? Some SBR in the pre-grit. Yeah, could work. Jorex Jim, good luck with the new guy. Get him on the camera as soon as possible, mate. Yes, well, he's he's going to have to be. He's gonna, ultimately, his camera skills are more important to me than his mixing skills. Um, right. Earnings currently on YouTube. I'll tell you what's quite good about it. When when you get into YouTube, everyone sort of says it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I've started to figure out what that means now. So when I make a video, it's like depositing money that gets interest. Because what happens is when you post a video, they pop straight away. So you do a video and it might my videos get anywhere from 10,000 to 40,000 views, usually around about there. I would like them all to be getting hundreds of thousands of views, but they all seem to get about 10, usually around about 10k to 20k, 30k, somewhere around there. As of lately, as I've been making better videos, that's where they seem to be at. Now, what happens is they, they pop at first and then they taper off and then the views start dropping down. Now, I can see on my analytics how many views. So I've got videos from way back that get like, you know, 30, 40 views a day, right? So not many at all. But they're still ticking away in the background. So the more videos you've got, these things, maybe they're only earning a pound or two pounds a day, but they're still ticking away. So every video, it starts to compound, you see. And then I make a new video. And when a video gets about 20,000 views, it makes me about anywhere from about 100 
to 150 quid. Let's just say that's rough sort of average. Most videos, because it all, see, it's different for every YouTube creator as well. Um, it's different for every creator because depending on how many views you get, how many lots of adverts that you guys end up watching uh, and what the channel's about. Someone that makes videos on financial stuff will make more money than someone that makes videos on music videos, for instance, because the viewers that are watching are interested in finance stuff and the advertisers can sell them. because the, the adverts are targeted, you see, to the type of viewer. That makes sense. So anyway, my the amount I make from adverts will be vastly different from somebody else that's creating content on something different. I get about £150 thereabouts from a video. Um, I did do a video a little while back that shot up and, and made about 800 quid. Um, and it was the video that's it's my most viewed video to date. And it was, some, I think I called it um, How to Make £600 in Four and a Half Hours Plastering. That video um, is maybe about 700 quid thereabouts. And it's still sort of ticking away as well, uh, which is quite nice. So anyway, all in all, I'll just be transparent with you. All in all, this month, I'm on about 2,200 quid is what's going to come in this month from YouTube um, revenue. So can't complain. That's the best month to date. Every month seems to get a bit better. Now, don't forget, though, I did have a video that popped. Did have a video that went flipping, you know, a couple of hundred thousand views, quarter of a million views, I think I got on it. Um, so future months, you know, with that video not being there, helping the, 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 the money flow, then it probably dropped down again. But we'll just see. I mean, ultimately, the time it takes to edit videos, the work that goes into it, it'd be more beneficial for me to just go and plaster someone's living room ceiling. I'd make a lot more money, you know, because it, it literally takes most of my evenings to edit the videos. So I'd make more money plastering. But I'm thinking if it continues to compound and build up, then, you know, could be a could be a good earner in the future, but we'll see. But it's getting better anyway. Can't complain. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Agent Jokes Jim soon. Right. Dan Salero, typo Soskirk being on the run. <laughs> okay, John Almond. Um, make sure the new guy doesn't doesn't do heavy breathing when he's filming. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sam. He's a nightmare. Sam. <sighs> when you get phone calls in the middle of the night, the pervy ones, it's him. <laughs> it's him that's doing it. <laughs> uh, uh, Dilo, you're going to leave. Yeah, looking forward to seeing how you get on with the new lad. Hope to see you soon. Night. God bless all. I'm going myself. Good night, mate. Omar, you skimmed the room. Had a guy had dry line himself. Uh, yeah. Been done about a year in a house with heating on, etc. This was the day I learned how high suction plasterboard can be. It was fun. Yes, it can be uh, very, very eventful. Uh, Alistair Booth, Evening Kirk, hope you're well. Cheers, Alistair. I'm good. Thank you, my mate. Stephen Thomas, that's class, pal. It's really interesting to know about. It's like having another income, random one. What about tax and that uh, account sort of that? Cheers for the transparency. What a bloke. Steve, yeah, the tax side of things, mate. Um, I believe it is a taxable income, so my accountant will be um, tossing it all up and taking 20% out of it for me. Well, not taking it out, telling me how much I have to pay to HMRC. <coughs> our good friends, our good friends that take a slice out of everyone's pie. Um, makes me sick paying it, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's taxable. Um, when I was in Switzerland, you know, I was I was trying to um, I was trying to figure out if I could open a Swiss bank account, <laughs> get all my uh, get all my YouTube money paid into that instead uh, for the retirement fund. Uh, Toby, bad. No, oh, by the way, I never managed to do it either. You've got to have an address over there. So, um, Toby Beswick, in the long run, that will compound a lot of money. Well, hopefully, mate. Hopefully we'll see. I'm not really, I'm not really in it for the money. The money's a bonus. Not, I'm not knocking the money, you know. 
But um, I don't, I don't really do these videos for money. To be honest with you, I did them. I tell you, I tell you why I make the videos. I started documenting um, different plastering things because I've got a son. So for those of you that don't know, I've got a one-year-old baby boy now, little Kirk. I'm big Kirk. He's little Kirk. Flipping, he's an ace. Now I started making videos. Um, to teach him, because I'm thinking, by the time he's older, I'll probably be too old. Plastering, you need all different situations to show um, how to get over things. I'm thinking I'll be 60s plus, you know, probably losing the interest anyway. I'm lo The interest in plastering is waning off now, so and never mind another 20 years' time. Uh, I might not be as enthusiastic at teaching then, so I thought I'll document as much as I can for him, so that if he ever wants to, you know, how do you get over this? You know, I'll say, well, I made a video for you, son. You can click on that, you know, and, and see. Because it's, you don't have to be, if you've got the basic skills, you don't have to be present in the room with someone to learn something. You know, you can just watch a video, aren't you? So that was me thinking behind it. I never considered at the time that people would start watching me videos. I, it just didn't dawn on me. My missus takes all of her pictures because she lost, we give them all of her memory cards and film and all this from years ago, from all these photos that she likes to take of the kids. We give them all to a bloke to put on a DVD. Remember when people used to do that? Put everything on a DVD? He lost a lot. He lost them all. So now my missus uploads everything to an album on Facebook so that it's all stored on Facebook. Private album. And that was my thinking with YouTube. I thought, I'll start making videos. I'll upload them to a video platform that plays videos better than you know than facebook hence youtube without considering that if i don't make the videos private that other people could see them i never even thought anyone would be interested i didn't anyway here i am here i am so people started asking me questions so i started trying to make videos to answer their questions and one thing led to another and um yeah uh Keith, your money should go up now. YouTube are going heavy on the ad blockers top stuff. Oh, that's good to know. Be loyal. Uh, you can get someone to edit for you, Kirk. I'm sure you have too much on, but you seem to do it all. Superman. Yeah. I'll, I don't know. I think if I can start making some real decent money out of youtube then it might be an idea to have someone editing um like i know this month's going to be like a two grand month which you think, oh that's 500 pound a week but it's not consistent you see some months have only been 300 quid you know it, it fluctuates so now i'm trying to make as good a content as i'm capable of it seems to be going up but we'll just see we'll see um dan where about you from pal i'm guessing ellesmere port or something Fucking heck, Dan, that was a hell of a guess. <laughs> Spot on. That was my report, mate, yeah. Stephen Thomas, I started watching a few weeks back. Nearly watched them all. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> You'd be sick of the sound of your voice, mate. Uh, Animone, um, must be nice having a family. I worked so much when I was younger, I had no time to make one. Well, never too late, mate. Never too late. Um... I've actually got a mate who's in his late seventies, and he's just started courting on a new chick now. So, <laughs> um, Liam Masters, uh, Kirk, how long have you been skimming for? Oh, mate, how long have I been skimming for? My dad started teaching me to plaster as soon as I started high school. All my weekends, school holidays, I was. Plastering. Um, it actually got to the point in about year nine, which is the third year of high school for any of you old boys. Um, so the third year of high school, probably shouldn't say this because I might get him into trouble, but that was when my dad started smuggling me out of school. <laughs> so he'd sort of say to me, Mum, the lad's not going to school today, he's coming to work with me, and he'd hand on a job. So if my dad got let down, then I was getting pulled out of school. Well, I just wasn't going to school. I'd be getting a sick note because I was going to plaster. And he'd just say to me, there's no point you going there anyway. It's just slowing your learning down. You should be here with me all the time. So so I've been skimming basically, mate, since I was about 11 years old was when I started to learn. 
And then I left school at 15. I was one of the youngest in my year, so it just so happened. I left school at 15, and I've full-time since then. I was working instantly at 15 for Red Row. Um, but the mad thing was, because I was 15, my national insurance number hadn't come through yet. I couldn't get set up with the tax or anything because I was 15. So I was working on site, but having to get paid through my dad's account, which was a bit, bit of a pain because... Um, you can only withdraw so much money out the cash machine at once, and he wanted his money to go to the pub. So uh, this was before contactless payments, you know. So um, so I'd have to get paid and then wait and wait for my money, which is a, until he'd done everything he wanted to do with his money. Uh, uh, Liam Davis, hi Kirk. How come I get lumps in the skin, and how do I get rid of them? Just whisk it for longer, mate. Whisk it for longer. Um, oh, Carper. Hi, Kirk. Fellow spread here. Just saying, hey, love the videos, mate, especially the screw in the wet brush handle. Game changer. Right, I'm glad you like that one, mate. <laughs> right, gents. <clears throat> Time's ticking. It's 20 past 10. I want to be up for five. Um, I've got... I wanted to do this whole video in the workshop um, to show you what my plans were and how I was going to do everything, but... As I said, I couldn't get online with my phone. So, but anyway, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to finish my brew and I'm going to go and um, hop into bed and get some shut eye so I can get a good start tomorrow. Um, first impressions, see what this lad's like. Uh, he sounds sounds great on the phone. I'll tell you what I did as well. Whilst I finish my brew, I'll tell you what I did. I put a post out on social media. Put a post out. Um, saying I'm looking for a young apprentice. I said, listen, I'm not going to lie to you. The money is going to be rubbish because ultimately, you know, we know the score. He's a cost and expense to me at first. He won't be earning anything. He'll just be costing me money, uh, probably breaking stuff as well, you know, splitting buckets and flipping, ripping. Well, that's the good thing. I've got a cordless whisk now, so the apprentice can't rip the cord out the whisk. You know, they let it tangle around the... the, the you know, around the paddle, and it rips it clean out. So <laughs> at least he can't do that because I've got a cordless whisk. But um, yeah, I've, I've told him the truth. It's it's going to be hard. We end up working in the rain. You'd be cold. You know, there's everything's heavy. It's just it's not a nice sort of experience getting into plastering. But you know, anyway, it, the job's there, and sort of put it on social media, and I got a load of loads of um, response. I overwhelmed ultimately, and what I did was. I got back to a few of the lads that had messaged because I wanted someone that lives right near me. It's no good sort of being miles away because I like the lads to come to me in the morning. For years, I used to go pick lads up and I spent that much time sat outside people's houses waiting for them to get dressed, to use the toilet, to make a cup of tea, to get in the van. No, I'm never doing going back to that. When they work for me, they come to my house they come in this workshop and they're waiting here in the morning for me. So that's how it works. So what um, I wanted someone that's close to me so they can get to me first thing in the morning. I, I specifically wanted a young lad, you know, 16 to, you know, in the teens, 16 to 20, because the money is not great when you first start. And I wouldn't put a fella that's got maybe a family and financial commitments. You just couldn't, they wouldn't be able to make it pay on apprenticeship wages. So anyway, I got a load, load of influx of um, messages coming in. Spoke to a few lads on the phone. The first initial thing was, um, would they speak to me without swearing? You'd be surprised how many lads are phoning up because they want a job, but are effing blinding down the phone to me. Now, ultimately, that doesn't. I'm, I'm thick. I mean, you can you can tell me all the swear words under the. You know, you can call them to me. I'm not bothered. But I needed someone that can watch the language when we're in customers' homes. So I'm thinking, if they've never met me before, and straight away the the the, the swearing, then I've got to take these to to Mrs. Jones's house. You know, little old dears and stuff. And you just it can't happen. So that was the first thing they had to overcome. If they didn't swear, then they'd go to the, the stage two. Where I'd, and what I did was I told them I was going to get back to them and let them know, and then I didn't. And it was part of the plan. I sat back and didn't didn't get back to anybody. And the ones that persistently kept reaching out, hey, any updates, any updates, you know, I thought, right, these are the keen ones now. So we narrowed it down quite quickly to the ones that were really, 
you know, if they were messaging, hey, Kirk, is that job still going? You know, any 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 news on on what's happening? They were the ones. So, yeah, we've got a, there's a couple to sort of see if they're a good fit, and um, one's coming tomorrow morning. So we'll see how he gets on. See how he gets on. Uh, uh, so sort of flipping load of comments are coming now. Um, uh, Omar, good night. Have a good one. Take it easy, Omar. Uh, Keith, take care, dude. Looking forward to the testing. Good night. Yes, I am myself, mate. Johnny H, I Kirk having trouble getting walls and scenes perfectly flat, especially on Artex. Um, Johnny H, I've got videos on plastering over Artex, mate. Go and watch them, please. Um, get yourself a speed skim. Go and watch them videos. I explain everything the best way of doing it to get it lovely and flat. Because what you're probably getting is the Artex bleeding through, causing your finish to go a bit bumpy. So take a look at them videos, mate. Um, what's going on here now? Keith, smash the like button, peeps. Cheers, Keith. Uh, hey, mate, music plastering your hell block. Cheers, Alex. Thank you, mate. Um, Liam Davis. Sorry, mate, I meant air lumps in the skim. Oh, okay. So when you're skimming, you're getting a uh, you get little air bubbles. Don't worry about them. They trowel out. Um, if you're using PVA, you probably get more than what you would if you used SBR because the background reacts. See, so that whatever you're going over reacts sometimes. So SBR seems to kill that off. But every now and then, you'll still get a little bit of bubbling coming through SBR. But as you're troweling up, it will go. So don't worry about it. Um, Ed. Supply and demand, cameraman not allowed to touch a trial. Yes, be a little while till he's skimming, but you know. Um Jorex Jim signing off. Night night all. Alistair Booth back to welding now. Hope we get a video with a new lad. Yeah, well, we'll see. He might be camera shy. We'll have to see what, what we, how he feels about being filmed. Um oh, I'm with you. I'm with you now about the air lumps. Um Dan, the old Salero, Night Kirk, all the best for tomorrow. Right, gents, okay. That's it. Let's wrap it up. Oh, it's been an up. Been emotional. Been emotional. <sighs> what a vid. Okay. Come on, let's all go to bed. Good night. God bless. I don't even know how to turn this off on my computer. <laughs> uh Stephen Gordon, yes, she's spot on. Right, end stream, found the button. Fellas, have a good one. Take it easy. Good night, good bless.